Welcome to Timbrook Church's Faith University. The title of this lesson is Crucifixion and Death. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and we praise you, Lord. Lord, we lift you up on today, Father. We come to you with our hearts humble, Father, ready to receive what you have given unto us through this lesson, Father. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. The scripture lesson text from this lesson comes from John chapter 19, verses 26 and through 30. The golden text comes from verse 30, and the scripture reads, When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished, and bowed his head and gave up the ghost. The time period of this lesson comes was about 30 AD and the location was Jerusalem. As we go into a little background of this lesson, Jesus stood before an angry mob. He was brutally beaten, flogged, and was given a crown of thorns to wear. Public opinion had clearly swayed against Jesus as the people demanded his crucifixion. And this lesson is broken into four sections. Christ crucified, prophecy fulfilled, provision arranged, and mission accomplished. We'll start off with the first section, Christ crucified. Verse 16 reads, Then delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified, and they took Jesus and led him away. After looking at this scripture, after trying to convince the Jews that Jesus had done nothing to, reserve, to deserve death, Pilate finally gave unto them and delivered Jesus over to them to be crucified. Since the Jews were not permitted by Roman law to execute anyone, the Romans would carry out the sentence. Chapter, verse 17, And he, bearing his cross, went forth unto a place called the Skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha. When looking at this scripture, Jesus was always depicted as bearing the entire cross to the place of his execution. But many believe that he only carried the horizontal crossbar since it would have made sense that the vertical section will remain permanently anchored into the site of this crucifixion. In Matthew's gospel, it relates that Simon was compelled to carry Jesus' cross because of his weakened condition. Jesus was unable to do so. If you, the reference is Matthew 27, verse 32. The place, the place of Jesus' crucifixion is known as Golgotha or Calvary, which means skull. In um, chapter 23 and verse 33 of Luke, you can find that reference. The place may have been named skull because of it, because of the, it was the place of death, and the image of the skull often symbolizes death. Verse 18 reads, Where they crucify him, and two other with him, on either side one, and Jesus in the midst. When we look at this scripture, there's various forms of crucifixion known to have been have existed in ancient times. Some prisoners was tied to crosses and allowed, and allowed to die of exposure. The goal here was a quicker death. The condemned would be nailed to a cross. The two criminals that was um, the two criminals that was also crucified with Jesus is a fulfillment of a prophecy in Isaiah 51 and 9 and um, verse 12. He made his grave with the wicked and he was numbered by the transgressors. Um, these criminals also mocked Jesus in Matthew 27 and 44, but one of them changed his mind, his heart, and it was ultimately, you know, ushered into Christ's kingdom upon his death. And you can find that reference in Luke 32, verses 20, 39, and 43. Verse 19 reads, and Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And the writing was, Jesus the Nazarene, King of the Jews. When we look at this scripture, since crucifixions was carried out in public, 
A place card was also placed on the cross of the condemned person to identify the criminal and the crime which the person was being executed. This was usually to invoke fear of any of the public rather than any type of informational purposes. Verse 20 reads, This title then read by many Jews, for the place where Jesus was crucif crucified was high to the city and was written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. When we look at this scripture, it was written so many people will be able to understand. Um, the scripture was um, written in three different languages. Arabic was a language spoken by most Jews at the time and is also known as Hebrew to Greeks and Romans. Latin was the official language of the Roman Empire and Greek was a universal language known to the world at that time and is used by, and is used by the writers in the New Testament. Verse 21 reads, Then said the priest chief of the Jews to Pilate, Write not the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. When we look at this scripture, the chief priest was highly, he was highly upset about the inscription. He wanted Pilate to change the message to say that Jesus only claimed to be the king of the Jews. Verse 22, it reads, Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. At this point, Pilate was no longer in the mood to accommodate the Jewish leaders. He refused to give their request any consideration, and he 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 just said, "I," and he kind of told them that I write what I have written, and he told them what I have written, I have written. As we move on to section two, prophecy fulfilled. Verse 23 reads, Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts, to every soldier a part, and also his coat. And now his coat was without seam, woven from the top throughout. When we look at this scripture, this was a common practice at the time for those on the death details to simply divide the clothing and other personal um, effects of the condemned amongst themselves. The condemned was usually crucified naked, adding more publicly humiliation. The four soldiers at the cross took most of Jesus's clothing and parted them out in four ways, but they still left his coat or his tunic, tunic which was woven into one piece with no seams. Verse 24 reads, they said, therefore, amongst themselves, let us not rent it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which said, they parted my raiment among them, and my vestures, they did cast lots. These things, therefore, the soldiers did. When we look at the scripture, Rather than tear the garment into four pieces, the soldiers decided on gambling to see who would get the whole garment. Now we move into section three, provision arranged. It starts off in verse 25 and the scripture reads, Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleothus and Mary Magdalene. After looking at this scripture, after the arrest, some of the disciples remained faithful at that time. Among them, there were certain women who stood near the cross. Jesus' own mother stood there witnessing the, his pain and agony. At that time, Jesus' presentation at the temple, the elderly Simon who solemnly prophesied that Mary's soul would one day be pierced by a sword, which is the references in Luke 2 and 35, the crucifixion was surely a fulfillment of his words. When we look at the scripture, as the oldest son, Jesus had a special responsibility of taking care of his mother. He was, Though he was soon to rise from the dead, his time on earth was nearly over. He made provision for Mary's needs in his absence. The disciple that Jesus loved was the apostle John. 
when Jesus said to Mary, Behold thy son, he was telling her that now she should think of John as her son. Verse 27 reads, Then he said to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour that disciple took her unto his own home. When looking at the scripture, when Jesus said to John, Behold thy mother. He's telling John that he should consider Mary as his mother. Jesus assured Mary would be taken care of after his death. The statement from that hour the disciples took her into his own home explains the purpose in making the decoration from the cross. Taking responsibility for his mother's welfare as he hung shows us even in agony, Jesus kept the Father's commandments perfectly. He was faithful in doing his fa the Father's will and making provision for his bereaved mother as any son would. As we move on to section four, mission accomplished, we start off in verse 28. Scripture 28 reads, After this, Jesus, knowing all things are now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. When looking at this scripture, and now all things were accomplished, Jesus fulfilled one more prophecy, prophecy by declaring aloud the terrible thirst that he experienced on the, on the cross. Psalms 69 and 21 says, They gave me gall for meat, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. Vinegar in that era was a cheap wine commonly consumed by soldiers. When mixed with other substances, it was used as an anesthetic. Verse 29 reads, Now there was set a vessel of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar, and set it upon a hyssop, and put it in his mouth. When we look at this scripture, hyssop is also known as a oregano. It was a herb used as a season and also in religious rituals. Here, it was a bunch or a branch of hyssop that attached a sponge to it, and it was used to offer Jesus a drink to relieve his thirst, making it possible for him to make his final declaration. When we look at this scripture, hyssop is also known as a oregano. It was a herb used as a season and also in religious rituals. Here, it was a bunch or a branch of hyssop that attached a sponge to it, and it was used to offer Jesus a drink to relieve his thirst, making it possible for him to make his final declaration. In verse 30 it reads, When Jesus therefore received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. When we look at the scripture, after receiving the wine vinegar, Jesus declared, It is finished. A single word in original language, the term was used at the completion of a contract, as a old, as a debt being paid in full. Jesus declared the very night before, I have finished the work thou hast given me to do. You can find that reference in 17 and verse 4. Jesus was not saying he was defeated when he said he was finished. He was claiming victory. Jesus' work to save lost, to save lost sinners had was now finally accomplished. After completing his work on earth, Jesus bowed his head and gave up the ghost. To confirm that Jesus had indeed died, the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, fulfilling a prophecy. They shall fulfilling it the fulfilling a prophecy. They shall look upon him whom they pierced. And you can find that reference in John 19 and 37. Had Jesus not expired, they would have broken his legs to hasten his death. And that scripture can be, that reference can be found in John 19, 32 and verse 33. It was a fulfillment of another prophecy. A bone of him shall not be broken. And you can find that reference in, in um, John chapter 19 and 36. 
after this, Joseph and Nicodemus buried the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you can find that reference in John 19, verses 38 through 42. In this lesson, we was able to study John's account of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, King of the Jews. Now we have a better understanding how Jesus died on the cross to take away the sins of the world. Now that we know this, live in victory over sin because Jesus Christ's death had made us free. Lord, we just want to thank you, Father. We hope that this lesson helps and encourages somebody, Lord Jesus, to know that they are free, that you have already paid the price for them, Lord Jesus. We thank you for how you broke down this lesson and made it plainer for us to understand it, Lord Jesus. We bless you, Father, and we praise you on today. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen.